Welcome back everyone and in today's video we're going to start exploring more procedural animations and today we're going to make a swaying or a wagging type effect. What I have on screen is kind of the beginnings but it's not the final effect. The final effect will look more like a swaying and wagging of a tail or you know just a tentacle kind of just moving more um, loosely. Um, so in the last two videos, we've kind of rebuilt our armature system. We made all the bones entity-based. So this we have a little bit more control over our, our armature and our bones. And today we're going to start building what um, sometimes is called an IK chain. Right now we're not doing any um, any inverse kinematics in this video. We're just going to do basically forward kinematics uh, for this effect. Uh, but we're going to start building the chains, uh, some of the framework. So in the next couple of videos, we're actually going to go into actual um, inverse kinematic chains. But for right now, we're just going to um, do just chains, but we're, the object is going to be called um, IK chains. So let's start looking at some of the code I have together. Um, so I have a new file uh, inside um, armature underscore E inside the fungi.mod folder. And it's called ikchain.js. <clears throat> that will hold all our kind of ikchain logic that we want to use for this specific video. So the ikchain is actually a pretty simple uh, class. It just holds an array of bones. That's all it does. I call them joints. Sometimes I call them bones. They're kind of interjoint. Uh, you can kind of call them whatever you want. Some things, sometimes you call them joints. Sometimes you call them bones. Um, so I called the the array links since it's called a chain and these are the links and there are the, the whole point of an IK chain is that you have your bones connected parent child parent child so this way if you so you can animate the bones connectively as a chain so kind of like your arm is a chain you know you have your your upper arm you have your lower arm so that creates a two bone chain um, a dog uh, has a rear leg that has three bones so you have a three bone chain so 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 much and so forth so that's what this object is all about it's just in reference back to the armature bone data but in in an array fashion so this way if we have like a whole armature set up we might create a rig um, object that will have like five chains uh, one for each arm one for each leg and then maybe one for the spine and maybe one more for the head you know, so you have the neck and head as a two-bone chain. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the so this way you can then animate each piece individually, and it makes it kind of easier. If if, if uh, the idea I'm going to try to approach is I want to break down a lot of the animations down into chains. So if I have uh, an animation for walking. And then I have like an uh, an animation for harm an arm like if I want to hold a gun or hold a sword, the walking animation where just just the hips and the and the legs stay the same, and then I can just swap in different animations for the arms. Um, so this way everything's everything uh, the animations can hopefully be bu built as piecemeal. Um, I might have like a complete animation set up saying, okay, I have a whole walking animation that has the arms and the stride. Then I have another one, just, it's just the upper arms, which is attacking, but I want the walking to be the same. So I can kind of just interchange it. So that's the whole idea of breaking down our armature down into, cha uh, ch into chains. So this way we can an animate each part of the body individually. And hopefully this way we can customize the animation. So if I'm walking... Um, Maybe, like I, said, like I said, the spine is going to be a chain. Maybe I can say, I can put like a, a parameter or rule saying, um, during this walk animation, I want the person to bend over a little bit. Um, maybe because I want to make them more like, like a zombie or the person's hurt. So I want to, so the animation says the same. I just, well, just want to apply an extra like constraint or a, kind of an extra rule. So just, just bend this chain a little bit more, essentially. So that's why I'm kind of saying, so this we can kind of, parameterize our animations. We can target different chains and by and maybe tweak them little by little so we can customize our animations really well. So that's like the end goal. But with the beginnings we gotta start building our chains. Let's let's really work on our chains um, and trying to get that really working really well. Then we can start combining chains in, into rigs. So we have our chain and like I said that's all it is just an array. The length is the total length of the chain, so it just adds up all the lengths of the bones, and this becomes very important when we, in the next couple of videos, when we start doing um, inverse kinematics. And count is just so I don't have to um, 
do link dot length. And I hate the idea that the word length is used for arrays. Like it should be count because that makes more sense because length can mean like how many, like for this one's length, like how many in units, how many unit lengths do I have this chain to be? Uh, in this object, I have two cla uh, two static object, uh, two static um, functions. So this is kind of like just a struct, and these are just uh, objects that modify the struct. Uh, this one allows me to pass in um, just an argument list of bones, and it just adds it together as one big chain. So I can just um, like if I'm going to do like an armature bone. Um, <clears throat> Like if I'm gonna do like a, like a human rig, it makes it super easy. I can just say here's the three bone, here's the two bones that make up an arm and, and call it a day. Um, the other static function that I'm using because we're gonna use this for a while until we start building rigs is create from armature. So it takes all the bones that exist in armature and just one makes one big chain out of it. Um, and for for a while we're gonna do a lot of tentacle chains or just like uh, limb changes, arms and legs. Just that's all. So that's what armature is only going to consist of. So I made this just to make it quick, easy way to just here's my armature, turn it into a chain object so I can use it for things. So now we have our chains. We need to be able to pose them, right? So I have a new spell. So I have a class I call IK Chain Pose, and all it is is essentially an, again another IK Chain. Say it has a lot of the same um, ideas. The, the difference is instead of um, being a reference to a bone, it makes um, an array of bone states. So this way I can I, I can make a copy of my IK chain transform data, tweak it, modify the hell out of it, do whatever I want to, and then when I'm completely done, I'm happy with the changes I did, I, I can apply it right back to the chain. So this way I don't um, destructively modify my object. So like ideally if I want to like make a bunch of things, I can probably pass the pose into like a thread. The thread will do its job and then I get back to results. When the thread is done, let's say like one or two frames later, I have like a whole new pose set up and ready to go for like uh, lerping. And I can just say, okay, here's my new pose for for the next keyframe. So that's so that's what I really want is the IK chain pose to be a non-destructive way to have a copy of my chain without actually modifying it directly. Because late in a lot of the videos we've done beforehand, we can modify them directly, and we don't want to do that, especially since we want to do lerping and we want to do inverse kinematics, and we want to um, do a bunch of other things uh, in the future. It's easier just to deal with a pose than apply the pose to our armature. So we have our IK change, we have our pose. Um, the set function, it just copies the current state of the transform for each bone. So it copies it straight into that specific bone state. Um, and invert, we'll, we'll, we'll go through a little bit today. It just goes through the entire chain and then inverts it. Uh, it, it inverts the rotation or the position or the scale. And if I pass in a parameter, I actually save the um, the invert the invert into another pose object or I just modify this pose itself so this way uh, like the idea is like if I was gonna have a leg that animates um, in a certain way now when I do the a mirror effect I just do an invert of that pose and there you go now I have like two mirrors of the exact same pose instantly so that's what inverts for it really just to kind of make a mirror image in the way of the current pose that we're doing we're, we're modifying and then of course we have uh, like I said this is kind of treated like structs and it's just some very simple op, um, like setting functions and then we have like static functions and apply transform is you pass in our chain object and we pass in our pose and it just applies it and um, since I don't want to uh, modify things when I by accent so I have something called like use rotation use po oh, so you kind of have to set a uh, for every bone state, like if I modify rotation, I have to remember to turn on use rotation. Um, so I know that this bone state has modified the the rotation, and this this is where we're gonna this is the rotation we should be using because this pose is gonna be doing a lot of rotation changes, or it's gonna do a lot of position changes, or a lot of scale position. Um, so I don't want to accidentally screw up my armature by applying pose or scale when the only thing I'm modifying is actually the rotation. Um, 
And apply lerp is the same idea. We pass in our chain, we pass in pose A, pose B, and then the time between the lerping. And it's the exact same idea as apply transform, except we uh, lerp between the rotation, the position, or the scale. And then we also update the transform that we modified it. You know, it's, it's done here too. So when we modify the transform, we, we set a state saying, okay, this has been modified. So this way the transform node and the transform systems can uh, update up accordingly because they have to create matrices and things like that based on these transform data. Um, so that is chain and chain poses. And that's really the, the main pieces that we're going to be dealing with. Um, for this video because uh, armature system armature preview and armature we've done multi m many videos of it and we've revamped it using ECM uh, ECS entities so now we're here so we have our, our regular stuff at the top I have something called G rigs G pose a and G pose B we're gonna do that we're gonna do two different things right now we're gonna just deal with the wagging um, so on render, we're going to be wagging, and we're just going to alert that the, the armature data has been modified. Please uh, update our preview with the new um, armature data because you got to push all that data to the GPU. On init, all we have to do is all do like I said, I'm, I'm just updating and making uh, having a class called tec te Tentacle Rig, which I'm telling you just build me uh, three bones in succession, and each bone has a length of 0.3 units, and that's it. Um, and then we have the tentacle rig and the tentacle rig is, is really just a combination of all the things we've done in a lot of previous videos just combined into one um, quick call um, it builds it sets up our armature component um, creates the bones as a straight hierarchy um, just sets certain values uh, it uh, finalizes it so this creates our bind pose um, so I take that and I create the I chain for it and then from there, I take I can add that component to our preview uh, drawing entity, and I set up the the preview entity for drawing how how to render um, our final uh, bones, or, or preview bones anyway, because we're not doing skinning in this video. We're just um, doing our bone previewing, and that's really the cons like that's all the te tentacle rig does. It just creates the bones at certain lengths and sets up the preview and chains and everything else. So so tentacle rig, I have access to the armature component directly. I have access to the chain and I have access to the preview rendering. And uh, and now we're going to look at the wagging function. So the wagging function, we pass in our chain. So this way, it, it modifies the chain. And this and, we're, and this is basically forward kinematics. We're going to go from the start of the chain, like the first bone, uh, the root bone, and then gonna, we're going to work our, our way forward through the chain hierarchy and modify its transform state. So we have a couple of things. So we have, tra we have a T for time. So we're going to pass in a time value. And it's not a time value like between 0 and 1 or negative 1. It's just a regular time, like time, like system time, just like a, a constant value. Um, and in, in this case, we're going to be, let me kind of just hide a lot of this. Oh, uh, seconds seconds uh, since. So since the application starts, so it starts at 0, and then it keeps incrementing uh, one by one. So every frame, there's like a constant increment of time. So that's the time we're just just overall real time we're passing in. We're passing in range. This is range of angles, um, like but in radians, like how many um, how many degrees do you want to rotate back and forth? Because we're going to use a sine wave, so we're going to rotate back and forth. Let's say forty five degrees and then negative forty five. So we're going to like I said, we're going to wag back and forth forty five degrees, or whatever point seven is in radians. Um, Speed is how fast we want the animation to go. So even though we, time is constant, we can speed it up or slow it down. Um, so we can, you know, like I said, we can increment it or speed it up. And then we have our offset. Our, inc our increment offset is how much time we want to change for each chain. So right here we're looping through our chain. And we're getting our transformer and our bone references, and then this is like the meat, the meat of it. So we pass. We're going to use a sine wave. So we know we're going to go between negative and one. And um, 
so we have time. So time is constant and we have speed. So right now it's just one. We're going to deal with just regular constant speed. We're not speeding up or slowing down. So time is time. So when this time value is, we want to say, I want to subtract time, I want to subtract this time value by this amount, but at every bone. So the first bone is going to have zero offset. That means the bo like the I is going to equal zero. And it doesn't matter whatever offset it is, if it's 0.5 or 0.2, whatever it is, it's going to equal zero. So the first bone is going to get this time in with sign. The next bone, like bone one, is going to have one times increment. So that increment value is times one gets subtracted from time. So this bone is actually going to, um, this bone two is going to be a little bit behind the first bone. So we're, let's say the sine wave says, based on this time, you're at 45 degrees, the next bone is going to be, if there's an increment, is going to be maybe 35 degrees. Then the next bone is only going to be at um, 35 25 degrees. So that's that's what we're doing. We're we're, we're for the further down the chain we go, we're going to slow down or make things um, be a little bit behind. So 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 when we actually start adding the offset, where right now it kind of looks like it's just something that's folding back and forth, you'll actually make it look like it's actually wagging, like there's actually some kind of physical movement, some real life movement happening. So we'll see that in a minute. And then once we have our sine wave value, we just, multi like I said, multiply by a range, which is an angle in radians. Um, we take that rotation and we multiply it based on our bone's initial rotation. So if a bone has an initial rotation, like a bind pose, uh, we need to uh, apply that new rotation to the current bind pose. So let's say if let's say if the, our, our 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 bone is already by default set at 45 degrees, and I want to rotate by another 45 degrees, in the end it's going to be actually be a full rotation of 90 degrees. So that's so, uh, th this becomes very important when we're dealing with dealing with armature data. So because when we create our our skeleton, our skeleton is all the bones are going to have a pre predefined starting rotation so to create a specific pose um, and most often we're going to create like a, something called a T pose and maybe down the line we're experiment dealing with uh, something called like an A pose where like the legs and the arms are kind of like at a 45 degree angle uh, where in a T pose uh, the hands are straight across at like 90 degrees and then the feet are pointing straight down at like um, 180 degrees because the bones point up by default. So if the if we want the feet to, the, the feet to point down, we have to rotate by some axis uh, by a hundred by 180 degrees. So if the foot is down there, it's like pointing down, and I want to rotate it 45 degrees, I need that initial rotation to multiply from. So when we in case you don't, if you're new or you're still not used to um, quintorians, if you want to add quintorians together, you multiply them. Um, sometimes if you multiply them, things look a little odd. If, if, if they're not, if uh, the rotation doesn't seem like the way they should be, like if you in your head, like if I combine these two rotations, they should technically add, swap the, the order of, multi of uh, multiplication. That's, that's like a nice tip, like because of all the mistakes I've done in the past. If the, like sometimes, Sometimes you ha you have to use mole, but sometimes I would have to use p mole. That means just backwards. But to to flop uh to switch things around, I just swap. You know, just do this. Just look at what fun whatever function you're using for quintorian mathematics. Just check just check it and just from a to b position. Just swap the values and just to check if your animations are working. Uh, but for this one, it's uh the animation that I'm, I that I just created multiplied by the current uh, rotation. So it is, it's a little backwards because it's purposely supposed to be backwards. That's for, for, for this rotation to work correctly, it has to be backwards. So it's, an, it's usually normally uh, when you're dealing with like addition, you'd say the starting plus this addition, uh, additional thing. And well, sometimes when you're dealing with quartoins, you <clears throat> especially you have it like an initial the rotation and you want to add, add a rotation you have to add, you have to multiply it backwards so it's what I'm adding multiplied by the actual rotation that I want to kind of change <clears throat> and that's it so so that's the premise of wag is that you go down the change and for every bone in the chain you um, 
the angle is a little bit behind so so you can change it by by that so so this this is what it looks like now and this is without any offset at all so it's kind of just bending back and forth we've done this in the past before when we were st first um, building up our um, armature system so this is the animation we've always had but now by adding a little bit of offset which we've done in the past when we we're doing our walk cycle uh, remember when we did the walk cycle we created an offset but we define an offset for each bone individually so one bone gets one offset and then we change it this one is different where it increments it does an incremental um, offset so let's see we have our chain we have our time we, we're, we're, we're rotating by 35 degrees uh, between 35 and negative 35 and um, we're, do we're doing double the speed so this so it's actually going faster than normal time so if we want to start adding some offset let's add an offset of two now you start noticing things a little bit different like it it's starting to look more natural like the wagon starting to look more natural um a good value for like three bones at 35 degrees at times two is six so if i click refresh now now it's now it's swaying now it's wagging now it's like you know if you have a dog tail that's wagging back and forth and i can just make it go faster i'm gonna go much faster so now it's more of like a wagging tail um, and I can increase yeah, it, like I said it works pretty well and that's really just like just, just the forward kinematics of kind of creating this wag swaying kind of animation and you know, with the beauty of the system is that you know if I want to I can just say give me eight bones did I save it? yep yeah. Refresh. See that, you know, like, okay, it's... That means I just need to maybe change it to maybe five. There you go. Now let's start and slow it down a bit and change it down to four. So depending on how many bones you have, you just have to tweak the animation a little bit. There you go. Now it's kind of like a ponytail or a tail that's kind of just wagging back and forth. So now you can kind of really see the swaying and the wagging of it. Um, so how many, how many, let's do 10 because I, I had something up set up. Uh, so you can kind of maybe, if you want to, you kind of mess around and uh, maybe do some other animation so let's say we're going to go in a negative direction instead because initially the function subtracts so by adding a negative we're going forward in time so the further down the bone the further in the future the animation is based on the base bone so we're kind of going backwards so he kind of kind of kind of kind of got this like snake like coming out of um let me slow it down a smidgen Like you ever see, remember like seeing a snake coming out of like of um coming out of a like a basket, you know, like the cobra or whatever, and it's you got the the guy playing the flute. So this is kind of, this is what the animation kind of looks me. It looks like it's kind of like the snake, kind of just like shaking his head, moving its body. And this, like I said, this is all based on the exact same chain animation, just by tweaking it, by changing a couple of settings. Um, Maybe if I change it up to maybe a nine, we'll see what happens. I don't know what kind of animation that is. You know, sometimes you don't get good things, sometimes you don't. But like, it it's worth playing with. And the the most interesting thing about doing this kind of like swaying function is that we can kind of have like a little th slider. Uh, UI over here and we can change you know you can slide back and forth like how many bones and um, the, the what's the the offset what's the speed um, let's say 1.2 let me see if I can find something that that looks looks good pretty good yeah I don't know <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna find anything going that far up uh, how about I just do like a negative four Oh yeah, that's bad. Oh, that's some really. 
Oh, because I was doing uh, I was doing fractions. I do fractions. Whole numbers probably don't work very well. It's all based on time. Oh, okay. There we go. We got a little bit more nice little slithering going here, so we can kind of tweak this a wee bit. Maybe a five. You know, like I said, if we had a, if I had a slider, I can just slide it, and you can kind of start. start yeah, that's pretty good. Starting to get it, make a nice little slithering thing going. I think this is where we were before. So maybe somewhere like 5.5, .5 maybe. Uh, maybe if I change the, the degrees a little bit. Uh, you know, change it to 5, 55 degrees. Oh, here we go. This is... Hmm. So there you go. Like, like I said, you can really play with this a lot. You, know, you can sit there and tweak it, change the time for the future. You can time to the past. Um just change the timing like I said if you guys want to like as a challenge build a little slider tool on screen and then just just play with it so this you can make a little configuration tool um, on how to create these little wagging chains or swaying chains or slithering chains I don't know what you want to call it but you know this is kind of like a cool animation for maybe a tentacle that's kind of just standing there just like reaching around <clears throat> you know you can probably update the function so this way the rotation changes per chain or actually no yeah you can probably do something like that why not why not? let's let's do uh times i times zero point two i don't know. i don't have no clue what this is going to do but this is going to change the rotation Ooh, freaky oh well, that's kind of neat oh I wasn't expecting anything, but yeah, look at it. It's like, so like I said, you can really just tweak the function, really you make the, the angle itself alt change um, from start to finish in, instead of just adding an offset. So, you know, you can like play around with it. Um, I don't know. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's much, that's what I'm talking about. Now, that's more of a snake type of slithering motion going. All right, so there we go. We managed to hack something pretty good together. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this this looks sweet. I love this. I got to keep this in mind. <laughs> By adding, um, why not? Um, I don't know. Rad offset equals zero. So if I want to do that, I can just say. That's gonna be a problem, isn't it? Yeah, that might be a problem. Because if that's equals zero, then the whole thing equals zero. Let me see. That's probably gonna break everything. Yep. <laughs> so I gotta have to come up with a, a different way to do this. But um but like I, like I said, you can add some maybe some kind of offset. Uh uh maybe I shouldn't what is this range? Well, let's see. That, that that's me multiplying. Uh, ideally, it'd probably be i times zero point one. That might actually give me a completely different effect. Uh, refresh. Oh yeah, that just completely something complete. Something weird. Yeah, something different. Um, yeah, just keep in mind multiplication, addition. It really can change these chains a lot. Uh, like I said, the multiply i by something that really gave it a nice slithering effect. So yeah, it's I don't know, it may be different modes of how to apply uh, the the range, like your, your range. So like I said, just really, like I said, right now I'm just playing with it. I'm just discovering things right now on this video because I didn't need to play with this too much. I just went straight to it. Um, refresh. So here's our function as is. Um, all right. So the last thing I want to really just kind of go through now that we're done playing with this, I probably spent too much time playing with that. Uh, I just want to, yeah, I mean, spent too much time playing. Um, I want to cover dealing with poses because, like I said, we're dealing with, dealing with poses. Uh, let's see if I reset everything. Yep, and I just want to bring everything back down to three bones. All right, so. 
So instead of doing wagging, we're going to just create poses. So I create two two poses, um, two pose um, functions. The hell? Oh, this should be commented out. I don't know why this is even here. This is the old function. I did a lot of refactoring. <laughs> this used to be called ch uh, chain states, but I renamed it to chain pose because I think that makes more sense. Um, so, so we have our pose. So we're we're modifying pose A. So we're we're saying that we want ninety degrees on that axis, and then I'm actually going to take this the second bone and copy it. So it's going to be ninety degrees for both. And then pose A and pose B. I say invert pose A and save into pose B. So if I click save, that's what pose A is. And if I say pose B, which should be the invert, would be the mirror image. Ta da! So by like I said, like I said, if I save um, the information, like let's say I had this like as a as a JSON data, I can I could I can save this JSON, load this uh, JSON data to a pose. And you say, give me the invert. So this way, I don't have to have two different poses because I can have one pose, and then invert it, and then automatically have the, the the mirror image of it. So it, like I said, it just this way I have less data. I can just save data, saying, okay, this data, it needs to apply to, to this chain, but also applies to this chain, but in an invert fashion. So I'm thinking ahead about how to manage the data. So this way, I can actually. Like I said, I just want to—I want to piecemeal my a lot of my animations. It'd be kind of really interesting to have s snippets of animation that I can kind of combine together and modify. So with that in place, um, and then if I go up here back to render, I do another time function, uh, and I and I, and I use the apply lerp that we I showed you before. I pass in the change. I say here's pose A, pose B, and this is the current time between one and negative one. Oh, actually, this one's a time between one and a uh, zero and one uh, for lerping, and that's all it does. So I have so instead of calculating um, all these poses in in runtime, I can end up calculating poses and then lerping them because uh, lerp sometimes like you, this way you're not doing a bunch of sign functions and creating new uh, quartorians and multiplying quartorians that that's just a process so sometimes like the idea is that maybe for certain animations it'd be easier and better like especially if there's just static animations that if i just generate keyframes as the as separate poses and then just um lerp between poses to create the animation so this way i can maybe optimize certain animations that doesn't need to be generated at runtime, so I want I want to kind of cross between runtime procedural animations and then pre-generated animations that are still procedurally procedurally generated, but then just lerped as keyframes. So I, I'm trying to work with both. So that's why I showed you right now in this one video. I showed you both runtime and then creating keyframes and then animating between them, and that's what this uh, this sample is. So. That that's it for this video. It's a little longer than I wanted to, um, but I did have fun and uh, I got to see some really cool uh, stuff because I got to play with, with the <clears throat> that wagging function a little bit more. Um, all this is really going to move on to our next couple of videos where we're going to really dive into IK chain, um, uh, you know, inverse kinematics with chains. Um, Here's a, a the finished prototype that I'm actually going to rebuild for the videos and clean it up. So <clears throat> as you can see, I have m all these legs running off like the set center leg right there or that, that center one that exists in origin. That's the data I'm animating. And that one bit of animation data that's procedurally generated can be easily applied to all these different regs using different IK solvers. And I created uh, four IK solvers. And I already made a video about the two-legged one a couple of videos ago when we started doing the walk animations. Or I can't remember. But uh, I've read this already when we were doing inverse kinematics. I did the two-leg, uh, the two-bone one. So in the next video, I'm going to do the curve. And the curve can actually curve into a complete circle, which is kind of neat. Uh, then I'll move on to what I'm calling the piston leg, which doesn't do, doesn't do any rotation at all, but it actually just changes the position of the bone 
So even though the data has rotation and all this other stuff, th just by passing that data to, let's say, the I call it the piston solver, it changes the bones um, by position instead of rotation. And then the final one, I don't know what to call it. I call it maybe the, the hind leg, or I'm just calling it the three bone one, which is the hind leg of a dog uh, or like a cat or like a lot of animals. So this way I can create rigs of that are animal-like. So like the front legs, the front legs of an animal is usually like a two bone type of thing. The the real legs are a three bone type of thing. So this way I ha I'm, I'm pretty much covered when I want to build rigs, especially since I want to uh, do like maybe a spider rig um, soon uh, after I'm done with all this. And I want to be able to do it with maybe um, two bones and then just with a quick swap, put in uh, like these tentacle um chains so that's why i kind of want to i'm trying to focus more on chain animation and animating the chains so this way i can swap pieces out so i actually would like to have like a character and he has like a two two legs two human legs and i could swap them out with two tentacle legs or i can have he can have one tentacle leg and then one normal human leg and it's the exact same animation that's driving it it's just different um chains with different solvers so, so this proof of, this proof of concept um, shows you that I have one animation and they're just applying to all these different things. Um, and if you're really, really interested, because um, I was kind of asked to by the amen, I think, to really to describe a little bit how this works. I did a really long post of how the data works. And then I wrote a little a post about so the mathematics a little bit and what I did for each solver. So I have a two bone solver. The arc solver, the piston solver, and the three bone solver, and I even posted some code because, to me, if I've I found that one a little hard to explain, um, so I explained it and I gave source code out already, um, my prototype source code. I'm actually trying to clean it up a little bit, and because um, I like I said, I have called everything state. I'm actually calling everything poses now. I'm gonna re I'm gonna refactor a lot of it, so. This is where we're going to go. So this is like this video today is the start of our chain um, procedural generated animations for chains. So so uh, at least the next three videos, we're going to be covering, like I said, the, the octopus leg, uh, the piston leg, and then um, the animal leg. So yeah, and so it's going to be great. And then I... Uh, after that, I'm thinking about doing doing a hand animation. So this way, you have like a finger a finger solver. I have it come out and you do like a single solver. So this way, I can maybe create a rig of like five chains, and then um, animate different poses, and it's just like transition between different poses by using that static data. So this way, I, I just I, I you know I all have to do is create one animation of or one static um, one solver that handles a single finger. Then I can just do different angles and different lengths uh, based on that data for different uh, for um, each hand or for each finger uh, I think the only tricky part is gonna be the thumb so these four fingers I'm, I'm I know I can animate just fine using chains it's just gonna be the thumb maybe a little slightly tricky not that much um, but so yeah after we're done doing all these legs I'm actually gonna do one hand one so that may be fun so like I do hand signs and stuff like that in 3d so we're Wasting too much time talking about future videos, but I just kind of want to show you like where this is going. Where I'm going to spend a lot of time uh, doing procedurally uh, generated animations and rigs and things like that, and try to build more solvers and things like that. And um, so yeah, I'll I'll try to post the a link to this uh, Reddit forum. So this way you guys can, if you're really curious, you can kind of go in and start learning it now. And if you want to try to prototype it yourself before I release any of the code. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, if you're enjoying what you're doing, please um, comment if you have any ideas that you want me to do in the future. Um, some people have asked me to do certain things and it's like, I can't get there yet. <laughs> I need to build a couple things before I get there. Um, um yeah, I want to I want to do add physics and everything else to bones, but I want to get I want to get the animation system working really well first before I start adding like a little bit little bits of anim, um, physics into the bones and having them sway based on the character moving. If the character moving forward, maybe have a tail kind of just flop based on on um, 
an actual wag, like have the wagging transition to like a physics tail, so that so when you're moving, it stops wagging and it kind of just follows a little bit of where you're going. And then when you're standing still, maybe it goes back to using the wagging function. So it's things like that I want to do in the future. I want to do an uh, like a spider rig, so this way you know, a spider that kind of walks around and, and and maybe rotates by walking. And you know, all you have to do is animate a couple of different. Um, do a couple of different leg animations, and then I just apply them for each chain leg of a spider. Um, and, and then it would be kind of cool to make it kind of like, because I'm really into the Zelda game, because I have a, a, new, a new Switch, I've been playing Zelda. And I would you know maybe make something kind of like um, The Guardian. So it's, like I said, I have the tentacle. So once I make the spider bot, I'll swap out the, the legs for the tentacle legs, and then have them walk around, kind of, and maybe, ha maybe build like a little head that shoots a little red lines that pretends to be a laser beam so yeah a lot of a lot of crazy things i can do in the future once these systems are really built in so i can't wait i i kind of excited um i still only have uh, a month and a half of unemployment so i don't know how far i can get get, uh, get going so um because i soon i need to start finding a, um a job so things are going to slow down <laughs> i've been at this for two years now and sadly it took this long just to get this far but I have to say it's been worth it. Um, the things I've learned doing this from scratch greatly uh, is better than using Unity on Unreal. Building things from scratch really taught me a lot, especially math. Uh, when you're forced to do the math for all, for all the nitty-gritty pieces of it, um, it makes some of this stuff a lot easier. It, trust me, it does. Like Once you get the nitty-gritty understanding of things, this becomes a lot easier. Um, then being in unity and then trying to figure out how to do things like this it's like oh my god <laughs> um so yeah I'm, I'm rambling now uh please like and subscribe um if you really like what i do uh tip me on patreon you know a buck goes a long way um all my source codes are gonna be free especially all the ik solvers that i just cre spent the last two or three weeks making i'm giving it out to everyone for free uh regardless of patreons um so, like I said, that Patreon to me is just a tip jar. Just throw in a couple of cents and uh, call it a day. Um, I'm probably only talking about because I'm unemployed and I'm starting to need money a little bit. Um, but whatever. <laughs> I should talk personal business. All right, whatever. Thank you for watching. Sorry for rambling. I hope you learned a couple of cool things. I'm sorry this video is way too long. But I'll see you in the next video.